Michael, um, you're down here today. Um, uh, we've had a, a bad result for Julian Assange uh, and for justice. Um, explain to me why you're down here today and uh, what, what your mission is, because I see you all the time uh, trying to give people truths. Um, and I loved your one with the uh, social experiment, to be quite honest. Um, so, yeah, explain to me today why you're here. Julian Assange was imprisoned because he had knowledge about the information resources produced by the intelligence agencies and the military which showed lies, brutality, murder, conspiracies which the US intelligence agencies and other governments around the world have been carrying out. And Ed Snowden, the same story. He was an insider who had access to information which allowed him to find out how the National Security Agency was spying on the entire planet, even on the governments of other countries. And so the ubiquitous rise of technology, of communications technology, and the and the and the its association with power has become if you like the primary terrain of, of warfare against the people you know capitalism is a system for plundering and robbing people or extracting resources from people um, and and it, it, it's it's new mechanisms of power and the extension of power and the extension of, of the wealth is the internet is cyberspace so let me just so, for example, the, the, the whole lockdown measures, they would have been impossible without the internet. There's no way the tyranny that's been established today could have been established without the internet. You, you know, even Maoist China or, or, or Stalinist Russia or fascist Nazi Germany had no such mechanisms of power and never introduced lockdowns and, you know, imprisonment of the people, health tyranny and all that sort of stuff. And so what we've got is we've all become Julian Assange and we've all become um, uh, Ed Snowden because anyone who finds out truths or spreads truths. So, if, for example, if I interview like Mohammed Hajib at speak, the hijab at Speaker's Corner, uh, who took, I think it was the Pfizer vaccine, and got a pulmonary embolism and nearly died. If I interview him and I put it out on well, on YouTube, I've got bad things, but if I put it out on Facebook, it gets a message underneath it saying, you know, not fake news, but like... Uh, misinformation yes, it has. Yes, yeah, yes. Mine got taken down, I put it off of you. Exactly, yeah. so we've now, they've made us now all into Julian Assange and Ed Snow, because we're 100%. all putting out information that, of course, it's all stored one, it's all, record, all recorded, so they've got marks, all this talk about social credit, it already exists. We've already made statements that are against the official narrative and have been marked as such. Now, what does it mean? It means we're monitored and controlled and observed into the future and, and we've been othered and turned into the enemy uh, and they make and they, you know and they are literally you know and that's now become the mechanism of, of social division you know in the berlin wall they had a they had a wall now we have a, a, a division where they say you're vaxxed you're not vaxxed you're wearing a mask you're not you're behaving you're not and all these mechanisms well, it's radical mechanisms to control yeah it's by divide division. and conquer yes, um, yes. Um, and this has been used all through history yes, again yes. and again and again yes. and it's for the people to understand understand that they are being divided whether it be from television programs your political opinion your sexuality your religion like I mean like I say we're down in speaker's corner they're all talking about religion this old story of divide and conquer of us rather than what's going on right now well they believe of course you know a lot yeah. of religions they believe that, that, that they're uniting the people but uniting the people sometimes I mean yeah. the, the sentiment yeah. is there yes some of that sentiment it's true did it all also exist in the idea of oh, solidarity. You know, this the German Chancellor. Her last sh shot was probably we need to introduce, introduce mandatory uh, vaccines. That was her her last shot before she retired from chart from the Chancery uh, in the name of solidarity. So this is the way in which um, words are misused by those in power to justify tyranny. 
and, 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 and well, well tyranny is happening right now so we look at Australia and the, the people are being locked away we have aborigines stolen from their homes and we're all still standing around talking you see this is the issue we're still talking and that's what they want they create a two sides to it whether it be smoking is good for you smoking is bad for yeah, well, you well that's the new game exactly yeah. the, new, the new game is to move on to other issues and turn one against another yeah. if they wanted to run a campaign against smoking they could have done it in decades yes, yes, yeah, of course. and the campaigns against smoking have always been you know designed like oh it's your individual choice and now they're basically implying that they're going to establish some health tyranny whereby your access to medicine healthcare, and so on will be determined by what you know maybe they'll take a test of your blood and see you know have you ever eaten certain things have you ever taken drugs have you ever you know uh, uh, you know uh, traveled to one place have you ever had a vaccination for whatever have you know uh, it's all about manipulating people and trying to make out that some people are acceptable and others are not, and that there are gradations within that that will be accepted or not. Right, Heiko, and, there was sorry, there was something I wanted to get onto, which was um, inside the shots now. Scientists are coming out uh, showing graphene is inside it, hydrogels, um, and also the fact that there's cDNA. Um, so what they're, it's looking like is it's breaking down the actual DNA and turning it into cDNA, which is patentable. Have you heard about this yet? I, 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 I have not gone into depth about yep. those issues. I did see the discussion about the German uh, uh, doctor who wrote about, or who spoke about the graphene hydroxide. He's dead now, isn't he? Uh, or are they Spanish? He, he apparently died. We're not sure what from, but he died. A stroke, they say, and his wife I, has I, come I, out I, and I, she I says... Saw, I saw yep. the interview with his wife. Yep. Like, uh, it, uh, nevertheless, uh, I watched a discussion with uh, Wolfgang Vodak, who, who I respect most of all on these issues. And um, he basically said, well, he's not sure about all this stuff. It needs to be investigated. And, 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 and there's yeah. not much more we can really say about that. What we can say about is that the the vaccines... Well, there was a very interesting piece by Sukhari Bhakti a couple of days ago, which showed that the intravenous or the intramuscular vaccination cannot enter basically it produces antibodies yes uh, the spike protein and the peptides that it may produce antibodies but the antibodies remain inside areas of the body that do not become infected in any normal circumstance by SARS-CoV-2 viruses and so because SARS-CoV-2 viruses enter the, the nasal passage and the mucal membranes uh, the mucus is where you'd need to provide protection but they don't reach the mucus and so the antibodies that produce in the mucus area are different to the antibodies that produced if you're injecting the arm and that's why the vaccine has not worked at all it does not work the vaccine produces antibodies yes you can say oh they've got antibodies why are people catching uh, no, no. catching the virus they're catching the virus because it enters the muco mucus and that's where it multiplies now you you're saying a vaccine uh, i don't believe well, it's a okay, vaccine the word yeah, yeah. is vaccine yeah, yeah. it's a mistake they're, yeah. they're injecting something into a gene people's arms. therapy it's and, a gene and, therapy and, and there are i mean there are you know the chinese va uh, yeah, gen, there are, yeah, yeah. the main Regular vaccine ones, they're yeah. using there in fact it's probably number one vaccine in the world at the moment is is a vaccine it's an inactivated virus yeah, but yeah. it shouldn't be injected in the arm it should be first it shouldn't be made of SARS-CoV-2 it should be a normal corona you know an old yeah. coronavirus because we've already had training yeah, yeah. that that should be inhaled if anything um if and that should only be for people who are extremely vulnerable exactly you know so you're talking about maybe rather than five percent five percent of the population could be given a choice to take an inhaler with one of the coronaviruses or an inactivated coronavirus which will protect their mucal you know their re re revitalize the, the capacity of their of their uh, lungs and their and the, the back of their nose and their throat to protect them against you know all the snot the lot slime that has protection that's our protection it's god gave us that protection exactly you know <laughs> so 
the idea that you need then to inject some in the arm for respiratory illness is, is idiotic. Yeah, I, I've seen them. Uh, there's a, a video online that does, does a really well uh, explained uh, Kruger's strat or something like this. Okay. Um, and they do like a, the immune system basically has all the pieces in, uh, uh, like a jigsaw puzzle or sorry, like a Lego. It can put together to attack anything. So whether it be a coronavirus or whatever else. Now, some of us are more, more, more vulnerable because our immune systems aren't strong That's because we're not about. eating the right food. I mean, it was we're a not taking care of ourselves. It was a, one of these adverts on one of the um, on Facebook or something like that. Seventy-five percent of those who died from or with were disabled. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Well, then focus on protecting them. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. Don't run around jabbing. But I also else. have like and, a, and, and making making some of them disabled in the process. Yes, you know, and God knows what the long term consequences are going to be. But uh, in the danger is the mRNA uh, mRNA injections, as yes. you say. Yeah, yeah. Because the mRNA injections are, as you say, gene therapy. They're designed to they're designed to be to turn the human body. Of the, or humanity's bodies into marketplaces yeah. for manipulation of the structure of the, of, of the, of the human body, of the yeah. defense mechanisms of the human body, yeah, yeah. with the intention that, that, that they would be able to produce products for anything. So, so any any potential illness that you could get that antibodies might be able to fight off or that you might be able to manipulate through uh, mRNA, um, you know, like even cancers and stuff like that, they've been investigating these things. Now, it doesn't mean that it would be in theoretically impossible, but it might one day be some mechanism for protecting us against some diseases. Yeah. But this is not what's being done. What is being done is a battleground by scammers, fraudsters. Yeah, they're, they're uh, the serial over, liars and corrupt. There's no evidence to back up the efficacy of their vaccines whatsoever. There never was. Well, I said, it was I said, all a lie from the beginning. Well, why would you believe um, large pharma companies that have had the highest fines in God the entire knows. world for God killing only, people? God only knows. Yeah. You know, and, and I did an interview with somebody, or discussion with somebody yesterday, and they yep. was telling me as well, and that is, you know, the Pfizer left. The most scurrilous role has been played by them, by the people who, who once upon a time decried the power of big pharma and big tech, and now bow down and worship it like a god. These people need really. They need to be pushed oh, out. Oh yes, of the movement, you know, pushed <laughs> rounded out. up <laughs> and put it out, and corralled. Just fools, yeah. you know, yeah. utter fools who are using their bureaucratic influence, and they tend to come. They tend to be sort of the university-educated people. It's that stratum. So you go amongst the building workers over here. The likelihood is, ninety percent of them will not agree with the measures being taken. Think it's a big fraud and so on. You go amongst the, uh, the, the into the university around the corner. Uh, and, and they're all wearing masks and yeah. pretending to be like, you know. Well, you well, know, they're, they're, they're being educated the, and programmed, aren't they, to, to work in society well, and not think for their, themselves. They're showing their pliance yes. to the establishment in the hope that they get a promotion. It's literally like that. that, that that's, that's the mindset they have. And so you go around, literally, you go around the corner to the LSE, yeah. and, and they're sitting there I've like, seen you know, it. it's a fucking sign outside. <laughs> Only people allowed in. You know, the LSE used to be open. You could go in there, walk in, attend a lecture, do, you know, go well, to the library as well. You could get a, a, an outsider's pass to go to the library. Well, here's the thing. Um, you can get on the tubes and can't. trains and pack yourself in like sardines. That's not a problem. But if, as you say, you have to well, stand were, in queues again, to get in to a uh, university. I mean, I was thinking that uh, some bizarre, you know, you might it might be useful to do some bizarre mocking of the whole thing because, oh yeah for example on the tubes you know they've always got the, the voices and all that and today i got on the tube and okay and everyone was sitting there nearly everyone was wearing a mask they everyone, were especially early in the mornings and then that's true and then and then then i come out on the platform and and there was no markers you know they had these circles thing two meter distance they were so gone. I saying bring back i was thinking maybe just, bring back <laughs> the circles yes. <laughs> you know, exactly. uh, Sadiq Khan's trying to murder us. You know, we can't, we don't know where to stand unless there's a mark on the floor. Well, says two meters apart. Yeah. You know, I have. Um, uh, just as you bring up those markers, um, I was arrested uh, yesterday and taken into um, uh, custody. Six police officers came to my door because I took down 19 social distancing oh, signs fuck. on the tubes and trains. Now, I had already been arrested be on the day. They've taken them down themselves. Listen, I want to explain. Uh, they've uh, charged me with. Criminal Criminal damage of two point four thousand pounds for nineteen signs. Now, 
if that's not corrupt, and I was taken to a police station and they had uh, no CCTV in the interview rooms, but they had them every single, everywhere else, in my cell, in the hallways, in the custody suites, in the, what you call it, outside uh, the car parks, everywhere, but not in the interview rooms. They offered me um, uh, a duty solicitor who came in and um, they said, oh, they're going to do you for criminal damage. And I suggested to him, um, as his client, what I'd like you to do is go out and tell the police I want a disorder fine for £90 and we can deal with it here and now. We don't have to waste any more taxpayers' money and I don't have to go to court and everything like that. It's 19 stickers, yeah? Um, so the solicitor said to me, he said, um, oh no, uh, you can't get a disorder fine inside the police station. I said, sorry, can you explain that to me again? So he explained that you have to get it on the street when they arrest you and things. So I stood up and I said to the solicitor, I have no confidence in what you're saying. I believe that you're colluding with the police because I have three of those fines at home and they were all given inside the police station. I walked out. I was then refused my own solicitor. They would not get him. They banged me and pushed me and whatever else because I have a condition called BPD. So I lost my temper when they wouldn't get my um, solicitor and things. So they grabbed me and banged me and whatever else and I asked for medical attention. They didn't get me medical attention. They then drove me outside a hospital, dropped me outside with my evidence bag, pointed at the uh, uh, tube station, said that's the tube and that's the uh, hospital. Deal with it yourself. So now they gave me a month on, um, what would you say, bail. They then asked, uh, uh, after the month's bail, they put me on another three months bail to do an investigation. They then came to my door now four months later, two days ago, at half eight in the morning, dragged me out of there, brought me to the police station, refused to get my solicitor again, said he's not on a list. I said, I can have my next door neighbor represent me if I want. They wouldn't get him. I asked for medical attention once again, because because of my condition, I have to get a Valium. I get it every single time I go into the police station. They refused that, wouldn't ring the actual doctor because a paramedic doesn't have the final conclusion, right? He has to ring the doctor and ask them. He says, no. They then packed me into a, a watch call and said oh we're going to send you to court now bring me down there refuse me medical attention down there will not give me a book will not get a a, a, a lay person to come down and speak to me because i wanted to document what was happening i get five minutes with my solicitor who explains to me oh we're just going to go with the guilty non-guilty what are you going to do you went guilty already that you took them down i said yes but i don't want two and a half thousand pounds i want you to put it off today she goes oh i don't think the judge will do that i said listen Listen to what I'm telling you. I'm asking you as your client, go up and tell them we want to put it off. I have reasons why. I haven't got my solicitor, I was refused it. I went up to the court, spoke to the judge. She listened to me, said, thank you very much. We'll see you on the 12th of January. So I can build a case. Sorry. Now, this is injustice for the people. Like my civil rights, my human rights were taken away by the police for 19 stickers and two and a half thousand pounds. This is what we're living in, people. Yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. And Listen. They, and they want to make people live in, live in fear that they that if they do anything, yep. that the same type of things want. They just sent me a, you know, because they go on about this thing, oh, the police said, oh, we don't investigate past offences. I, <laughs> uh, I got a letter from the police uh, a few weeks back uh, charging me with breaking tier four regulations on the 27th of December last year. I got one of them. And they got a long, but it only just arrived. I mean, I was like, what <laughs> what, you know, it was dated apparently in April and I said, yeah. he arrives at my door yeah. in late November. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, uh, and, and there's a long spiel by the officer who, who observed me, who, who, tr who tried to prevent me coming into Hyde Park and speaking. I remember and then, that And day. then reported that I was speaking at Marble Arch and it's on YouTube. Yeah. I mean, People are fucking nutcases yeah, yeah. coming out with stuff, well, and, then, and then they charge me with that. And then they say I've got eight hundred pound fine to pay. Eight hundred pound fine for what? It's supposed to be incremental. So yeah, yeah. They're assuming that's that three I was, fines. I think it goes that's two, right, but four, that's right, that's right. eight. And I never received any of them. <laughs> so, so now they're trying to charge me eight hundred pound as well. And I said, okay, well, I'll just send, send, send me, send me the call. I want to call you. Well, I, I've done the appeal the same as you, um, and then and then they have to come back. So then that, they said, you basically you go and plea in the court, and you say you're not guilty, and then you opt for Crown Court. Yep. 
as simple as that. Crown Court. They're going to go ahead. Crown Court. Well, they for 19 stickers. They're not going to do it. Yeah, they they, they, they dropped it for, for me. Um, no, I, I've gone guilty on the fact that I took off the stickers. I'm only applying. I, I don't mind if they if they want to well, take, take away that. my rights. You shouldn't have done this. Uh, not listen, I it's did take obligation. down. I did take down signs. I did okay, do that. Okay, if they okay. call that breaking the law, I call it being the resistance. Well, exactly, the same way. Exactly. So if they want to do that, I don't mind. That that's what they want to do. I will do what I want to do. I'm free to do what I want to do. They they can try this again and again and again but that, this is what we're fighting that system yeah, yeah. no new world order new world system I say yeah. we, we have to change things Haiku be, be a later, pleasure thank you Cheers.